Hey guys, it's me again. Um, all right, you've been through midterms. Uh, you have final exams looming. By now you realize that at least during first year, and I have to say through the next at least year to follow, multiple choice exams will be a huge part of how you're assessed. Um, that's not always a great thing. I, I for one, hated multiple choice exams. I, I did not do well on multiple choice exams. Um, and, and many of you may be the same. Many of you may feel like they don't capture your learning as well as you think they should, or, or, the, or as well as maybe other forms of assessment might. Uh, and yet, the simple fact of the matter is they're easy. Um, they're, they're an easy way for us to assess learning quickly, relatively cheaply, and because of that, they are super, super common. Uh, and so that always leads to the obvious question then, well, how can I do well on multiple choice exams? I had one student in my office who, who put it a very interesting way, I thought. Um, she said, you know, I'm studying the material and I'm, and I'm thinking about all this stuff as I'm studying, um, but then I go to an M tuner and I see these multiple choice questions and it just seems like a different world. Um, it seems, yes, it's the same interac uh, information I'm interacting with, but I'm interacting with it in such a different way. I feel a little lost and I get a little anxious and, you know, and all that stuff starts happening. And so she said, how can I be better prepared for these exams? That's what this is about. Uh, so this is, I'm going to tell you about the part of the course now that's completely voluntary. No grades are associated with anything I'm about to talk about. If you want to press stop and just you know, not, not listen any further, you can do so without penalty. Um, the hope I have, though, is that you may choose to engage in a process that I think will help you not only in my course, but in every course that has multiple choice exams. Okay, so what's that process? Well, let's get there. Let me give you theory first, because I'm a firm believer that any of us is more likely to do something that's good for us if we understand why it's good for us. So let me give you a little bit of psychology data, psychology theory with respect to memory, uh, because that's what a multiple choice exam is, right? It's a memory test. It's, it's can, you, can you pull out of your mind the reading and the lectures you saw and whatever related to this? So here's what we know from memory. People do the best, their memory is the best when their mental context at study matches their mental context at test. We're going to call this transfer appropriate processing, and I'll talk about it in class uh, when we're in the memory chapter. But, but for now, that's really the critical point. So in fact, that student who said, you know, I study and I think about it this way, but then at the test, it's a very different style of interaction, and I find that a, a difficult transition. And so what I'm going to suggest to you is, yes, I understand that. And the best way we can do that is to bring the test into your studying. So to get you thinking when you're studying more the way you think when you're tested. And if we can kind of match those mental processes, then you're going to have a much better chance of transferring your learning from the study to the test. Um, uh, let me just sort of say the same thing, but from a different theoretical framework that might really reinforce it as well. To successfully remember something, you need to do two things well. First, you need to put that thing into your mind well. We call that encoding. You need to encode that information well. And you do that by studying well, by thinking deeply about it, maybe you know, drawing links to your life or to other people in your life, etc. And so hopefully that helps you get the information in your brain well. But the other thing you need to do is get it out of your brain later. Um, so you don't just have to encode, you have to be able to retrieve that information. And while many of us spend a lot of time encoding, encoding, encoding during study, we don't spend a lot of time retrieving. And there is this notion called retrieval practice. Look it up on Google Scholar. Or the test effect. And what these things show is that when students test themselves, so you should study for a while, but, well, let me give you the experiment. There are a number of experiments where they've had two groups of students. One group, well, both of them study for a while. They study some material for a while, same amount. But then one group is allowed to study for more time. The other group is tested on what they study. 
Okay, so we have study, study versus study, test. And then later we give both groups a final test. What we find is that the group that did the study and then the test does better on the final test than the study and the study. Um, something about testing yourself gives you that retrieval practice and also puts your mind in that same state that it's in in the test. And so when you get to the test, it, first of all, your mental state is not disrupted. It's not like, what the heck is this? Because you've been there. Um, and, um, well, you've had that retrieval practice. And, and so your retrieval processes are more ready to go there and retrieve the information. Okay, so that's the theory. So the punchline from all this is one of the things you should weave into your study, I don't, I'm, not, I'm not suggesting this should be all there is, study like you're studying, but every now and then create a multiple choice question. Doing so will make you look at the material differently. And, and just try this, just, you know, if, 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 if you're kind of thinking, I don't know, Jordans, I don't know. So, so just give me, give, me one, give me one thing, do this. Take one paragraph and read it and just kind of think about it and, and then reflect a little bit on what you've learned and what you know. Now, take that same paragraph and write a multiple choice question or two about the material in there. Um, and I'm going to tell you exactly how to do that in a moment. Uh, write that multiple choice question or two. And now ask yourself, did I think about that paragraph any differently? What was I doing when I created that multiple choice question? How was I thinking about that material? And what I think you'll find is you were thinking about it differently, first of all, that you kind of came at that paragraph in a different way. You probably started to think, well, what is the most important thing that I could ask a question about? And how would I actually word that question to make it different from what's in the paragraph? And as you go through that process and ultimately produce the question, you are becoming familiar with the exact same process that the graduate students went through to produce the questions on your exam. You are mentally living in that same world and you're be, you, you will become comfortable in that world. In fact, I think if you start doing this every now and then, then even when you don't do it, you will read paragraphs but read it in that more complex way. You will kind of see the questions that people could be asking. But in order to get there, you have to actually engage in the process. Um, you can't just say, okay, let, tell me how they create a question, I'll just think about it. No, no, you have to do it. You know by now that's sort of my mantra, right? You develop skills through repeated structured practice employing the skills. So if you want these skills, you have to actually do it. In fact, I would love you to do it in a way very similar to how the TAs do it. Okay, so here's the proposal for you. On Pepper, uh, and you know, start playing with Pepper on, on the Blackboard site, you will find a folder um, that it contains a couple of things. So one of the things it will contain is the manual we give to our TAs that guides them in how to properly create multiple choice questions. So I'm gonna show you exactly what we show them uh, and that's what they use to build the questions you are experiencing in the course. And it's what I would like you to use, because what I would like you to then do is, for some of the chapters as you're studying, create questions and post them on Pepper. And so we'll have more specific instructions on Pepper about how to do that. I don't want you, for example, to say what the right answer is right away. I want you just to post your question and let other students um, try to answer that question and chime in on it. Uh, and then eventually you can come back and, and say, yeah, you're right, it was C, and that's what I was getting at. Or, wow, a bunch of you guys picked B, I really meant it to be C, and then maybe that's a discussion you guys could have about why B and C are so, you know, um, potentially confusable, uh, etc. But a couple of benefits happen from, from this, if, we, if enough of us engage in it. One is you get all those benefits I talked about by actually learning what it feels like to write these questions. Uh, and so you will gain that transfer appropriate process. You will get a little bit of that retrieval practice on your own questions. But if we now share questions, now, yes, you're going to give other people your questions, but you're going to have access to a whole bunch of other questions created by your peers. And you can try to answer those. 
And in doing so, you're getting that retrieval practice. So you can study a chapter and then go to Pepper and answer some of the questions. And now these questions should be created just like your mTuner questions, right? Now, of course, some peers are going to do a better job than others on this. That's just how the world is. You know, we can only do so much in a, in a crowdsource kind of world to, to prevent that. Um, although maybe we can, yeah, we could probably do this. We can probably allow people to upvote questions they think are good. And so then maybe if you're worried about this, you can just focus on the upvoted, you know, the ones with pretty good upvotes. But the idea is you can test yourself using the questions of others, and you can learn more about the question process by creating questions yourself. I believe engaging in this process is the best way you can prepare yourself for the final exam in this course. Um, and, and that's my answer to students that say, you know, what should I be doing? This is what I think you should be doing. Uh, so we're going to try to set that all up and have that structure there for you uh, to help you guys share all those questions and engage in that process. Look for more directions on the Blackboard site. I just wanted you to understand the theory, the reasons why we're doing this, why I think it's a good idea, and I want to encourage you guys to jump in and do it. All right, so leave it there. Um, it's Friday afternoon for me right now. 4.52 p.m. So I am going to call it there. Um, I will try my best to have a great weekend, and I hope you all do too. All right, see you later.